Father, we just continue to bless your holy name tonight, God. Hallelujah. We will continue to sing and let it ring for your glory, for the glory of the King. Hallelujah. Father, we just bless you tonight, God. We thank you for this another opportunity, God, you have given us, Lord, to share your word. And Father, we pray, God, that your word may be of substance. Amen. Hallelujah. To the ears that may hear from you tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. For the glory, for the glory of the King. The topic of my lesson tonight is it's time. It's time. And the scripture reading will be taken from Matthew chapter 11, verse 12. Hallelujah. And it reads thus. And from the days of John the Baptist until now. Hallelujah. The kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violence taken by force. Father, we bless you one more time for your word, God. Touch the hearts of your people once more tonight, God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, touch the, the hearts, God, and the voice, God, and, and the heart, and the Hallelujah, the very vocals of your servant tonight, Lord, as I bring your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I have two female cousins um, who are sisters. And um, on numerous occasions growing up, I'll watch the older sister hover over the little sister. Protecting her as best as she could. Over the years, I admired something in particular about the big sister. Whenever the little sister get into fights, 
She'll make it her duty to be there from the start of the fight until the fight concludes, from start to finish. The phenomenon about the story is that the big sister would act like she's never going to get into the fight, which most of the times is one-on-one, -on -one, which makes sense. You fight fear. But look. But she will look for an opportune time to jump right into the fight. So remember, she'll, she'll act like she doesn't want to fight, but all the while she's looking for an opportune time to jump in and help little sister. Her intentions was always to fight for her little sister because she loves her so much. So what the little, little sister is winning or losing the mere fact that someone is putting their hands on her, that's incentive enough for her to jump right in. Now you may be saying, um, what's the story about fighting have to do with the people of God? The people of God has been in a fight. Always been in a fight. Always been fighting. And whether or not we're losing, God is looking for the opportune time to jump in. See, I guess we could relate it now to our current situation here in this part of the earth, in North America, in the, in, in the country of the United States of America. That just when the devil thinks he thought that he's gotten America. Hello. Hello. The Lord Jesus is about to jump into the fight to defeat him. See, the Lord only reveals things to redeem us. So while there have been some, 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 some unpleasant things that's being revealed now on camera about the great United States of America, it's not for America. The Lord is not revealing these things so America could go down, but he's revealing it so America could get it together. Hallelujah. And even come back better. The Lord Jesus Christ is waiting for the opportune time to jump in this fight. Hallelujah. Now we're constantly fighting with the devil. So while people may think that, um, even the devil may think that, that he he has it all going on and he has a momentum. God is just ready. He's waiting for the opportune time to jump in and do what he does best. So the Lord is, is revealing the things that has been tearing, hallelujah, this country down since its conception. And now it's all for the good of the country because he's ready to fight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say it's time. The topic of my lesson tonight is that it's time. It is time for Jesus to come in and finish the fight. Just like my cousin, the Lord always planned on fighting, but he was just waiting for the opportune time. And now is the time. Somebody say now is the time. So look out. Look out. And now that now is the time, we have to make sure that we're, we are on the right side of history. That's a popular phrase that's being used now. People want to make sure that they're on the right side of history. So that means when the history is written, Lord help me Jesus, you will be one of the good things that's being talked about and not the bad things. So how do you get on the right side of history when it comes to God and the, thing that, and the things that God is about to do? The way you be on the right side of history when God comes in, in, into fight is to get your house in order. Lord, help me. Get your heart right. Get your mind stated on thee. Hallelujah. Because the bridegroom is on his way. Hallelujah. He's coming back for a perfect bride. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not just talking about the rapture or even us even going to heaven eternally. But God is coming back to do a work. Hallelujah. And he's looking for perfect brides. People with their hearts standing on thee. So sometimes your heart may not... 
um, um, define your condition or your position, but the Lord knows the heart. When a broken and a contrite heart, he will not turn away from that. So when your heart is broken and when you're in the place of humility and when you're in the place where you say, God, now it's time to do what you, whatever you want me to do, your situation may still um, remain the same, but your heart is ready. So get your heart ready for when the Lord returns. Because there are foundations that the Lord is getting ready to build. There are cornerstones that the Lord is getting ready to plant. But you just got to be ready. You just have to be ready. You have to be on the right side of history when the Lord comes. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah. You have to be on the right side. So the most important thing is to be in the fight and be fighting for the right reason. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to do this. I want to fight. The Lord is looking for people that say, I want to do this. I want to fight for the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to be in a fight for the name of the Lord so the Lord could choose whatever time. Hallelujah. He wants to jump in. I want to be like Joshua. I want to be like David that knows what it constitutes. Hallelujah. What constitutes a fight. And we're constantly fighting. The scripture I read said that the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violence taken by force. That means that the people that are, that, that are causing violence and bringing violence against the kingdom of God, they're not backing down. But I need to tell you, there's a God that's not backing down from helping the people that are fighting his war, that are, that are proclaiming his gospel, that's carrying his torch. He is ready and now now is the time for the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah, to jump in, to jump in, hallelujah, hallelujah. The people of God has taken their seats for too long in this country, for too long in this world, for too long in this life. The people of God have taken the seat for too long. The Lord said it's time to pick up your sword. It's time to, to be courageous like Joshua. Now it's time to, to stand on your own two feet. Hallelujah. Which is the word of God and proclaim the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And proclaim right from wrong and stand for the right and denounce wrong because the Lord is ready. The Lord says, time now for me to jump in. I have had enough. I have had enough of, 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 of this world trampling my name. I've had enough of this world trying to defame me. I've had enough of, 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 of this world and my so-called people watering down my gospel. Hallelujah. Now it's time for me to jump in. And in the time when I'm ready to jump in, you better be on the right side. Lord, help me, Jesus. I could go back to the book of Job, a very famous book, when in, in the first chapter, hallelujah, in the first chapter, Job, in the first chapter, in the first chapter, Job caught his kids partying and doing all type of evil and doing things they had no business doing. And Job said, well, you know what? I wasn't there, son, daughter. I was not there. But because I know, Lord have mercy, how dangerous it is to be outside of the will of God. Let me sanctify you just in case you sin. Because the danger, because the wages of sin is death. So let me just sanctify you just in case. I wasn't there. But because I know that the activities that you were taking part in does not glorify God, there is a possibility that you may die. And Lord help me, Jesus. And Job sanctified his children. And shortly after, a couple verses down, the Bible said that the, the kids went back to doing the same thing. And while the first time the kids got away with it, the second time around, Lord help me, the second time around was the time when the devil was actively trying to destroy Job. You see, now Job was a righteous man. And because Job was a righteous man and he's steadily fighting on the right side, the devil could not kill him. The material things around him and even, the phys even his loved ones, the devil could kill, but he couldn't touch Job because Job was, was in right standing with God. So now the first time 
Lord help me, America. The first time when, when your daddy Job thought that you had sinned and sanctified you, there was no danger. The devil, didn't, the, the, the devil was now roaming the earth at the time. But the second time around, because you got away the first time, you think you could go back and do the same thing over again. But the second time around, the devil was walking throughout the earth looking to see who he can devour. And because you was under that protection, when, when the devil came that second time, you think because the first time you got away with it, you're going to get away with it again. Because you was under that um, protection and on the right side of the, of the fight, you got devoured. So this right here. Is wise counsel. Sometimes, especially us believers, we try to toe the gray as much as possible. <laughs> toe the gray as much as possible. Because we've never been significantly, significantly held accountable for the things that we're participating in that we have no, no business doing. We think we could do it over and over again. But I'm here to tell you tonight that the Lord said it is time. It is time for him to jump into that fight. And whenever the Lord comes, Lord have mercy. The wrath of God is just as powerful as the love of God. They're both powerful. So when the Lord come back to fight his fight, you better be on the right side. Because you're going to be in arm's way. You're going to be in arm's way. Well, when the bullets and everything start flying and the ammunition and the artillery start flying, you better be on the right side. Hallelujah. This is the word of the Lord. Father, we pray over every year this evening, Lord. Hallelujah. Now we hear this message. Father, we even pray right now, God, for those who doesn't know you, Lord, as Lord and Savior tonight. Father, we pray that you may move upon them, God. Father, we pray, you said in your word that all it takes to be saved, Lord, is just to believe. Hallelujah. That God sends you to this earth and he raised you from the dead and just to accept you. Hallelujah. As Lord and Savior. Just confess it with our mouths and believe in ourselves that you came to this earth, you died. Hallelujah. And God Almighty, God, God the Father raised you from the dead. Hallelujah. And you are the Savior of our soul. That's all it takes to be saved. So, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus tonight, Lord. God, that, that sinners all over this world, God, whomever may hear this message that don't know you as Lord and Savior, God, would even say these words, God, and by faith believe, hallelujah, the things that they're saying, that Jesus Christ came to this earth and died, and God raised Jesus Christ from the dead and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Lord, that this may be their prayer tonight, God. You said when one is saved, the angels in heaven rejoice. Father, I pray for multiple rejoicing tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. As your people come back to you, God. As lost sheep come to you. God, you said that you will leave the 99 and go find that one. Hallelujah. Everyone on this earth, everyone underneath the sound of my voice is the apple of your eye, God. And they're that peculiar to you. Father, so I pray that you may move upon them tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah.